Congratulations to each of our nominees today. Um, if confirmed, I look forward to working with you. Um, I would like to begin, <coughs> excuse me, with you, Ms. Cardi. And as the representative to the UN's Economic and Social Council, I wanted to assess your um, feeling about the Commission on the Status of Women, which is the only global body dedicated to the promotion of women and girls empowerment and equality and aids to mainstream women's equality and UN activities. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as you look at the role that you can play within ECOSOC and with the Commission, how do you think um, efforts to improve women's empowerment could be bolstered by the work of the Commission? And do you see specific changes that you can be engaged in that will help with that? Senator Shaheen, thank you so much for that question. I've spent a fair part of my career working on issues related to women and girls and gender, and it's an issue that's very near and dear to my heart. I see multiple opportunities, Senator, across the UN system where I could help through a position in ECOSOC advance U.S. goals regarding the well-being of women and girls um, if I was confirmed for this position. I think CSW offers particular opportunities. I think the important thing is to be very strategic and forward-thinking in how we engage there and to make sure that we approach each CSW session with a very clear sense of what we want to try to achieve. And we work very deliberately with CSW and other missions in New York, other governments, to try to make sure we're of one mind about the objectives we'll pursue during those sessions. So can you give me an example of a priority that you would have as you're looking at um, a first place to focus? Well, one issue, Senator, I feel is terribly important is the issue of education for women and girls. Um, it's something, unfortunately, where there have been huge and significant setbacks in the context of the COVID epidemic. We know that there are tens of thousands, millions of girls out of school at this point who may never get back into school. And I think that would be a really important area actually across the UN system for specific focus, because we know that without that kind of access to education, that it really imperils a young girl's future. So I would encourage CSW to look at that set of issues. Thank you, and we know that empowering women and girls also adds to the stability in communities and countries, the um, potential opportunities and prosperity, and economic opportunities in countries as well. Um, Ms. Stewart. I was really pleased to see the Biden administration extend the New START Treaty, something that I worked on um, 10 years ago when it was before this body. But as we think about how we continue to engage with the Russians, where do you think we should be thinking and how can we build on that to cover tactical weapons, um, emerging nuclear technologies, uh, other efforts that we really need to address? Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, I share your concerns with respect to um, the Russian uh, challenges that we're facing right now. Russia's new nuclear weapons and its diversification and dual-use delivery platforms represent a threat to strategic stability. Uh, the Strategic Stability Dialogue uh, is an interagency process to seek risk reduction and greater understanding of the policies and actions of the two nations. In the plenary, led by Deputy Secretary Sherman, we have agreed to two working groups okay. uh, for experts to discuss first the principles and objectives for the future of arms control, and second the capabilities and actions with strategic effect. We have made clear that we want to address all of Russia's nuclear weapons, including non-strategic nuclear weapons and novel delivery systems. Our driving principles in this process will be increasing U.S. and allied security, ensuring effective verification and faithful compliance for legally binding measures, and avoiding future miscalculation or misunderstanding. We are only at the beginning of our conversations, and so I agree with you, we need to be careful to understand the full range of challenges and misunderstanding potentials uh, that we face. So no determinations about specific approaches have been made, but the strategic stability dialogue is very good first step to try to engage and understand where we have overlapping concerns and where we can make progress uh, towards stabilizing our relationship. Uh, if confirmed, I hope to consult closely with this Congress to, to address this process further and to truly understand how we can best um, evaluate and, and consider this threat. 
And so are you optimistic? You said you think it's a good first step. Are you optimistic that we may be able to make some progress? I'm cautiously optimistic that in certain arenas, there is some progress we can make, that we can understand where our collective advantage for both the US and Russia, and hopefully the global community, uh, can be um, satisfied by um, taking important um, actions to address uh, destabilizing behavior and to lead to the best norms of responsible behavior. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I understand the next colleague.